So let's take this right down. Welcome to Long Range Pursuit. We are here in Texas at the Dallas Safari Club Expo introducing our new products for 2012. We're also introducing a new format to the TV program where we've allowed outfitters to submit their footage with their clients using our products. One of these outfitters is Dustin Rowe with BC Backcountry and Beyond and his hunter, George Medina. Now this is hardcore stone sheep hunt. This is live and how it happened in the field. We know you're gonna enjoy it. along here. Uh, spotted a nice ram this morning. Uh, George and Cody and I are going to see what we can do and see if we can get after him. We've got the whole crew behind me here and the dog in front. Snuck down into the creek and we're gonna try and get in in the range. We've got uh, about 400 yards to go. Uh, we we're about 900 yards just back there, so hopefully we can get within range and make sure he's a legal ram and, and put him on the ground.
<laughs> here we are with this uh, incredible stone sheep. Um, I'm hunting here in, in British Columbia with um, backcountry BC and beyond with Dustin Rowe. My first morning of the hunt, we came over the back to this mountain you see back here. Thank God that uh, Dustin let me use his, uh, his gun. He's got a 7mm Magnum LR1000 from uh, Gunworks. And uh, thanks to the gun, I was able to make a 500 yard shot and uh, killed it. One shot dropped. I am uh, thrilled. I still have uh, moose to hunt for. And uh, I'm thankful and excited. Thanks a lot, guys. Proper rifle care and maintenance is a critical part of being able to shoot long range. Uh, having your rifle assembled properly, maintaining your bore in proper condition, and uh, cleaning your rifle uh, and keeping it in condition can affect how your trigger breaks, uh, how your primer strikes, it can affect your first shot, cold bore shot, uh, and th you know that's your accuracy and your precision. So those are very important things to understand and to be able to, to accomplish to maintain your rifle's condition. Now, there's a lot of components in a rifle. Most of them are pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but there's enough that it's a little overwhelming. Uh, what we're going to do is explore the different components of this rifle system. Take it apart, we're going to put it back together, we're going to clean it, we're going to maintain it so that we understand how our rifle goes together and then we'll be able to do it ourselves and make sure that our rifle's in proper maintenance so that when we're in the field, that first shot's where it's supposed to go. Now when we're pulling these components off and we're putting them back together, how tight do we put them? So we gotta have a torque wrench. Right here I've got a, a, a torque wrench from Wheeler Engineering. You know, scope rings, we're talking like 35 inch pounds. Your bases, about 45 inch pounds. Uh, then down on the bottom are our action screws. We're gonna pull those up to 65 inch pounds. Uh, for starters, we're gonna pull this scope off and it's set up with, uh, with a set of tally rings and uh, we've got a torque screw. We can just pull this out. There's eight screws total. Now I've got a little tool over here, a little uh, tray that's magnetic and I can take these parts out that are metallic, throw them in that tray and it's gonna suck them down and keep them from bouncing all over the floor. It's a pretty handy tool to have available. It costs just a few dollars. And if you've ever looked for a spring or a screw for a couple hours on the shop floor, then uh, you'll realize how important that magnetic is. So we're going to pull this last screw out. Now you notice those screws weren't too hard to break loose. 35 inch pounds with a nice locking agent is just right for that scope. So there's my scope. I can pull that off, set it aside. I'm sitting here in a, in a vise, I'm grabbing by the barrel, but uh, you can see how convenient it is to work on when I can just lock it in and, and unlock it. Um, we're going to turn this over, put my screws right up, and then lock that back in. It's very convenient to do. Now, if you don't have one of these big vices mounted on a bench, a really convenient product is the Tipton uh, gun vise that you can lock the stock into. That's a really handy product, uh, runs about $100 retail. To pull these bottom screws out, I'm going to change from my Torx to just a good old hex. And on this action, uh, very similar to a Remington, you're going to have two main screws that retain the floor plate and bottom metal to the action. Now if you're running like an ADL style trigger guard that just has one front screw to hold in the front of the action, there's going to be a third screw right here. And in most guns, that third screw goes into the action. So you'll want to make sure and remove that as well. So that one's loose. And this one's loose. There's one of those screws that's going to end up all over the place. I'm going to throw those two screws on my magnet. So here we've got our floor plate. And this is our follower and our follower spring. I'm just going to take those all out in one group and set it aside. Now I can see my trigger, I can see my magazine box, and 
uh, on our LR1000s, we've got a second retaining screw. We're actually using a Savage Accu wedge. Uh, so if you've got a, one of the new Savage rifle stocks with the Accu stock, uh, you're going to have this same wedge. This is a very unique feature, very handy. Um, you're going to have to loosen that up a couple turns as well. Now, my stock is not secured to my rifle. I just pull it out. And you can see how that bedding system works on our rifle. We just have a, a V-block bedding block with that Accu wedge without any bedding, so it just locks it in place. So it's really pro important to get the proper torque uh, settings on that. I'm going to set that rifle stock down here. Now, uh, the last thing we're going to take off right here is the magazine box. Uh, let's take down our bolt. Right here I've got a side bolt stop that comes out. Now if you've got a Remington, you've got a bolt stop that's right here. Re uh, Winchester's on the side, uh, on the top of the action, and then uh, like Weatherby, you actually pull the trigger. So different r rifles and different action styles have different types of bolt stops. I just pop this bolt out. Now to, to disassemble the extractor, if you need to replace one, or the plunger, we've got little pins that retain those. Now this is where you find those springs bouncing all over the shop. You, if you ever knock one of these screws pins out, you want to hold it in a vise, knock the pin out, and then hold your fingers over these parts so they don't go springing all over the place. And then catch those screws and pins and springs and put them in your magnetic retainer. So the, what we need to do is take this firing pin out of the bolt so that we can uh, make sure that we got proper lubrication and get rid of any dirt and grit. Now, with this tool, you just latch that edge right over the end of that. It pulls that piece up, and then it's just threaded right in. Very easy to take apart. Now, what, the way I like to clean and prep these is just spray them off, and then with like a rem oil or a, a light lubricant like that, and then uh, it, uh, hose it off with some compressed air, and then do a real nice job greasing these threads up because there's a lot of pressures on those. So there's my um, firing pin, spring, bolt shroud, and then here's my bolt. You can clean that as well. So we are disassembled uh, completely for maintenance. Now triggers, uh, usually you don't lubricate. Um, this is a jewel trigger, so the proper maintenance procedure on that is you, you spray out the internals with liquid butane and you don't put any lubrication on. So I would probably spray from this side and the top and then spray from the top down and try to remove any grit, dust, or anything that's collected over time. Um, and then I would just tip it back up, put it back together without doing any more maintenance. If you need to take it apart, there's just two pins right here and you just knock those pins out. And on a Jewel, you don't have a lot of parts that come apart, but on a Remington uh, factory trigger or some of the replacement triggers, the, the sear and there's some springs and some other parts that'll come apart when you push those pins out. So watch for those extra parts and put it back together the way that you're taking it apart. Well, everybody's getting tired of sitting around the shop, so we decided to grab some guns and some steel and head out in the hills and, and do some shooting. I've got one of our LR1000s here, and we just pulled off a target there at a mile. We're right at 1,762 yards, so just, just right at a mile. And, you know, kind of an unconventional weapon to be shooting that far. And you'd never really want to shoot animals that far, uh, but to get out into practice and have some fun, it's, it's a good time. We're shooting almost due east, all right? So we've got, we've got that Coriolis effect that, that you read about, where that earth's spinning, and because we're, we're shooting east, it, that target's going to be falling out from under us just a little bit. And it's a, it's a calculated rate for every second that your bullet's in the air, the curvature of the earth and the way it's spinning, your target's gonna be falling out at a rate that's almost a couple inches per second. You look at the piece of steel that we're shooting at, it's only 20 inches by 20 inches, so we're, we're right at about a minute and a half out there at a mile, so it's, it's, it's gonna be a tough target to hit. So. What I'm going to do, because our rangefinder will only give us the ballistic solution out to 1,400 yards, we're going to use uh, 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 our handheld calculator. Now this model that I've got right here is kind of obsolete, this IPAC unit, they just don't build it anymore. But Aaron and, and the crew, they've been working on our new iPhone app, an Android app. You can put it on an iPod or you can put it on your phone. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool. Look for that here in a couple months. So. I can take some environmental conditions out of our rangefinder, or I can use our, our wind meter that'll give me our barometric pressure, 
and uh, wind speed <coughs> and our temperature and elevation, basically your pressure. I can plug it into this calculator here. That's what we'll do. I've got one of our 6.5 x 284s. So it's just a little 140 grain bullet. It's coming out of the muzzle about 3,000 feet per second. I'll take the information off the turret, plug it in here along with some of those environmental conditions, punch in our wind speed, punch in our, our parameters for our spin drift and for our Coriolis, and let's come up with a solution. And I think if we get it in right, we'll be able to hit that target. Might take a couple shots, but we'll get it, we'll see. So. Once around is 20 minutes, we can go around again to uh, 40. 10 more would be 50. Seven more would be 57. So that's what, that's what we'll do. I'm probably gonna take about a click out of that. I think we've got it doped out just right. I'm gonna measure my wind speed one more time. In fact, I cheated just a little bit. I measured it when we put our target up. So I kinda know what it's doing up there. I'm gonna compare with what, what it's doing here and we're gonna, we're gonna hold for it and hopefully we'll hit that target. Measuring a little slower. I think I'm probably gonna split it where we are kind of protected right here. I'm gonna split the difference and, and take the shot. First shot, cold bore. Looks like our elevation's right on. I hit just about a minute and a half to the left of the target, so I need to hold just a little more wind, so it's a little stronger wind than I thought it was. I'm going to make a correction. I'm pretty excited. The elevation was perfect. I think if I just move over my wind, I'm going to hit that target. Well, it took two shots. You can see that first shot just went right off the left edge of the target. That means I wasn't holding quite enough wind. You know, we were up to about three, four minutes of wind. I think I was holding right at three and a half on that first shot. And it, it, we needed another minute and a half. So another about 20 inches worth the, worth the wind. Made the correction, pulled it over. You can see, just nailed it. That's 1,760 yards. That's with our little 6.5 x 284. It's a heck of a cartridge, high BC bullet. But what really made us uh, able and, and capable of taking that shot was our ballistics, our, our software in our rangefinder, and the software in our handheld program, which is available soon in that iPad form, I, I, iPhone, uh, Android app. So, combination of those two, mile shot is pretty doable. Only took two shots, and that's pretty good. So, let's go up to that target, check it out, and uh, go from there. I can't believe it only took two shots. Number two, number one. Number one we missed just because we didn't have the right wind doped. Uh, so we just made a correction, brought it right over, and, and nailed the plate. This is a little 20 inch plate. We're sitting right at a mile. And I did that with one of our little 6.5 x 284s. This is our LR1000. This is what we hunt deer and elk with. We just shot out here at a mile. I'll tell you what, that's a tough shot. Dead. He's dead. I see him. Should I reload or no? Uh, I don't think so. What do you think, buddy? Just rocked him. 568 yards. Gunworks, baby. LR1000. That's the ticket.
super guy, Dustin Rowe. Way to go, bud. Great moves, man. It is Great a, moves. It is nice. a good move. Hey, boy. Hey. <laughs> Gunworks did it again. Uh, I don't know if you can see behind. We shot from top of this hill here, 550 yards, and uh, he never moved. Without this gun, that would have been a very difficult, if not impossible, shot. So, uh, again, this has been an incredible experience. Uh, I am extremely happy, and I will be back hunting with Dustin next year. Hunting apparel for long-range pursuit provided by Sitka and Kinetrek Boots of Montana. License applications made through Cabela's Tags. Brought to you by Gunworks, G7 Optics, Night Force, Hornady, and Caldwell Shooting Supplies.